Now the joy of photography is whatever you're going to be photographing next. And today, it's cider. My friend Steve, the graphic designer, needs some pictures of these bottles of cider to cut out and go on a shop window. This is gonna be fun. Okay, give me a glass. <laughs> We've got to photograph this cider. It's a quick little job. Steve, the designer, needs a cutout of these three bottles. White background, fairly simple. We're going to use the old trusty light cube. We've seen this before when we were photographing glass. So, if I can work out where the zip is, where's it gone? Ah, there it is. Ready for it. Be careful. Take your head off. Right. There we go. Let's get that light cube there. I'll just put it there. Okay, we have these bits. This bit here. Somebody was very kind to uh, suggest that I iron this and that I'm a lazy boy on the glass shoes. <laughs> and you're absolutely right, I am a lazy boy. Find a fast way of doing everything. Now, it would take me something like, um, with my ironing skills, it would take me something like uh, half an hour <laughs> to get the iron and the ironing board out. And do you know what? It would take me about 10 seconds in Photoshop to lose those creases. So do you know what? I'm going to use Photoshop. So here we go. We've got that in there, nice and square. Cider with Rosie. Look at that, old Rosie. All right, let's get a camera. Ah, now he wants quite a big resolution on this, so I'm not going to use that D3. I'm going to use the D810 because if I can get that up on maximum resolution. We're talking about 100 meg images. That should be big enough for him. Okay, three flash guns. Now, I'm gonna put all of these onto manual. Let's give ourselves a rough exposure so we know what we're doing. So, we've got one at the back going through here. We've got one going through there and last but not least we've got one going through the side here and that will give us an idea of what the exposure is doing. Now that flash gun I'm also going to pop onto manual because otherwise it will be trying to take over. Okay we're on 1 16th I'm going to point it up so that it's not giving us any light at the subject. I'm going to go on to manual in terms of exposure. I want to show you what's actually happening, so I'm going to take that off of that for a second. So let's take a couple of pictures and have a look. All right, there's the image. Zoom in to make sure that there are no unwanted reflections. A few more images. And just have a look that the uh, the cutouts okay so that we've got nice clear lines around the edge for a cutout. Yeah, okay, on to the next. And of course the beauty of little jobs like this when you've got two or three things to photograph in exactly the same way is that once you have the light set up, then it's set up for all of them pretty much. You can just carry on. And uh, as you see, yeah, check the next one, make sure it's all okay, and on to the next. And it's these little jobs that are bread and butter work for working photographers. Uh, there are studios that do great jobs of, of lighting wine bottles for, for fancy restaurants. But this is a designer who just wants some really quick pictures of these to cut out, make into window art uh, to put into an off license window. It's, it's a simple job and uh, it's just an hour's work. It's a simple hour's work and that includes the um, post-production time, the Photoshop work. So let's have a look at that Photoshop work. Now I'm going to cut this out uh, so that we can have a nice neat white background and I'm going to use the pen tool. 
Uh, most people use the lasso tool for doing cutouts, which is fine. But if you've got the pen tool, if you can get used to using the pen tool, uh, I find it's a lot more accurate. You get much better cutouts because you can do this look. You can do curves. Now we've just gone around that curve in a beautifully smooth way and uh, down a straight line and then we'll have a curve again look at the bottom and you just every time you click it you get a new anchor point so there's an anchor point and I'm going to go around to the bottom and put another curve in look there anchor point there and then put the curve in and so it means that you have a much smoother cutout you can use um, the uh, the lasso tool but when you're going around that curve you have to blow it up really really big and just do little tiny movements and even then you know it can look a bit like a, a hexagon <laughs> so now we have a pen line around our cider bottle but we want a selection so we go to paths over here and make selection and hit ok and get back to the layers tab and now it's a selection of marching ants all the way around it so we need to make it a, uh, a cutout with a white background so over to layers so go right click and duplicate the layer so we've got two layers now in that identical layers uh, in that top layer we're going to inverse the selection and then hit delete and you'll see the background go. and on the next one down just get rid of the, uh, the viewing and the background goes we cut it out completely so now i'm going to uh, save that and i'll save that as a png so i've got the cutout the separate cutout as a png uh, and then save that i call it uh cider one and okay and then we'll uh we'll flatten that image go up to the layers tab and flatten the image so the next job is to cut the circle out where your finger goes in the handle there because uh, we need that to be clear white like the background and i'm going to use the pen tool again again using the curves all the way around to get a nice neat cut okay so now we need to make that a selection and so we come over here to paths right click make selection okay right now just want to fill that in a fast way of doing this is going to just fill a uh, delete and choose white there we go that's done because we're on a flat layer super so now we've got our bottle we're just going to adjust the levels and no we're just going to have to cut this out i think to adjust those levels uh just down on by the label i'm going to get the lasso tool i'm going to make a rough cut out there of the label area that I want and feather it. I think we'll choose about oh, 100, 120. Get the levels, pull it up and lift those a little bit, not too much. There we go. And I'm going to do a little bit more of a cutout actually down on this bottom half here on the actual uh, label itself. Feather it again, 100 feather. And let's lift that so we're not lifting the the side or above we're just lifting the grays and then bringing that back down on the blacks it's just about there so recrop that and come on crop tool you're the wrong way around there you go give it a little recrop there you go steve the designer you've got your bottle of cider Stick it on your print. I think he's going to put all three together on a print and it's going in the window. Okay, I'm going to repeat the process again for bottle two. I'm going to use the pen tool, go around. You know, I used to use the lasso tool, used it for years and years, and then watched a PewDiePie video where he kindly said, what was it? He said, um, don't use the lasso tool, that's for plebs. Uh, use the pen tool, learn to use the pen tool, it's much more accurate. And do you know what? He was absolutely right. And here we go. Let's just finish this off with these curves and make the selection. And excellent. We can get rid of the background in exactly the same way as we did on number one. Okay, yeah. I'm going to flatten that image for a save as a JPEG and just do the levels and just do a little cut out again on the uh, on the shaded area with the lasso tool. Tweak the levels, bring the blacks back in, recrop it, and we're good to go. And uh, on to number three. 
Now, as I said before, this is not a big job. Not every single job you get as a professional is going to be a big production. Uh, it's one of those things that, that somebody comes along and you have professional standards that you're not prepared to drop underneath. However, it's like asking a plumber to change a plug on your sink. Uh, that's just a really small job and it's probably a bit fiddly and, and actually not worth their time. But they do it and they do it because they know that when you want your bathroom refitted uh, or a new boiler, you'll come back to them because of your working relationship. And that's what this is. It's a little job that you fit in. It's not going to win any awards and the actual work is probably only going to last on the shop for maybe one, two months. But remain professional and do a quality job. The photography and the post-production cutouts were done and delivered to the designer in about 40 minutes. Final images to the designer will look something like this, add another one and add old Rosie in the middle. So that's the image that we give to the designer and they'll draw up a design something like this. And then that will be made up into a vinyl and applied to the shop window. So there'll be people walking past and they'll know that in that shop, we sell cider. <laughs>